Hey there guys, I'm Eric Hansen. Welcome to a new episode of Tracking Dirt. In this episode, I am bringing to you the East Coast Trail in Newfoundland. I felt super honored to be invited to come out to Newfoundland and check out a trail that has been worked on for the last 24 years, but it hasn't gotten much coverage and very few people even know about it. And I was totally surprised and fell in love with this place. So I think you're gonna enjoy this episode. Without further ado, check out the Newfoundland East Coast Trail. Stretching north and south from the provincial capital of St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador's East Coast Trail runs 190 miles along the Avalon Peninsula and some of the most dramatic coastline in the world. With its stunning waterfalls, massive cliffs, crashing waves, and lush green forests, it's without a doubt one of the most beautiful trails on the planet. Just arrived in Newfoundland and uh, setting off the East Coast Trail, this is a whole new part of the world for me. I've never been out this way, and uh, I'm just super excited to see what this trail has to offer and the, really just this whole part of the world has to offer. The East Coast Trail was formed in uh, May 1994. And by that time, it had, uh, had opened about 190 kilometers of trail. Initially, the East Coast Trail was viewed as an impossible dream by many. We had strong vision, even stronger commitment and dedication. And through the help of uh, many very dedicated and skilled volunteers and good partnerships, we are here today. We've delivered over 300 kilometers of trail. What we've done is we've built a trail that's giving people uh, immediate and ready access to our coastline. The trail has been a work in progress over the last few decades, making it one of the newer trail systems around. And what I can tell you is that my first taste of the footpath is already blowing my mind. We have a, uh, a coastline the second to none in the world. You've combined the raw natural beauty of the East Coast Trail with unique and historic communities, our culture, our history, and our people. And that differentiates us from the rest of the world. Finishing up a great first day of hiking, I head down to the small town of Fairyland to meet up with Kelsey, a local musician. You played one song earlier. With the, the tribute the to tribute, the tribute, yeah. Would you be willing to play that again? Yeah, of oh, course. <laughs> Well, it was just a year ago today I left my emerald isle For the lovely shores of Newfoundland I've traveled many a mile Well, the people there, they well I grew up with music around me from the day I was born. And my grandfather was a really good singer, so growing up we would go to his house and we would just sit and listen to him sing. And for me, that was a big part of growing up, so then that became a big part of who I am. pine-clad hills and her mountains glen To her shores of shingle and sand God bless what makes Fairyland the most special to me is the proximity to the ocean. It's something I've lived with most of my life and it's just the most oddly comforting thing to be on the edge here. The hospitality, just the feeling of home that is kind of universal and I guess integral to the place. That's another one of my favorite things about here. As you are, we love you new. So I'm learning a little bit about the culture of music and how that influences life here in Newfoundland. So I'm at the Sullivan Songhouse and uh, getting to participate in a kitchen party. So there's about uh, 25, 30 people that are all just singing and dancing away. So I'm getting uh, initiated into the Newfoundland culture here with uh, song and dance. So uh, having a good old time. 
there was no such thing as a bus. So the concept of a kitchen party is basically a family, a group of friends, even like a local or whoever just might happen to be around will come to your house for a visit. They could have a cup of tea or a drink or something like that. And you pretty much sit around the kitchen and you share a story, you share a song. The energy inside is warm and inviting and the locals are more than happy to squeeze everyone in. Thankfully, even with the tight quarters, no one seemed to mind my truly terrible singing voice, which for your sake ended up on the cutting room floor. I'm at Cape Spear, the most easterly point in North America. So I'm here to watch the sunrise. We're gonna get the first bit of sunlight here that's gonna touch land. So I'm pretty excited to actually catch sunrise here before you. Should be beautiful. After watching the sunrise, I return to town and meet up with the guys from Ocean Quest. They've agreed to deliver me to one of the most remote portions of the East Coast Trail. Hiking a trail will always be my favorite way to explore new lands. But seeing this amazing coastline by boat is something I will never forget. It gives me a totally different perspective on the land and one that's impossible to grasp from atop the cliffs. The waterfalls are everywhere and not just light trickles of water splashing gently into the calm sea, these are powerful roaring falls that plunge hundreds of feet into the ocean below. We're trying to exit the boat so that we can go hiking today. We've got 20 kilometers to hike, uh, but with the swells, it's a little spicy actually getting off the boat. And we're trying to find the right spot to do it without us dumping into the water, getting pulled off by a wave, or something worse, I don't know. Take it off. I go for it. No! <laughs> yeah. it over that My celebration for successfully disembarking is short-lived, as I realize, much to my dismay, that I'm actually on an island. And so I gracefully hop back into the boat and we'll just try again further along. No big deal. Oh, oh geez, that boat came up. Yep, we're good. good. <laughs> Oh man, that was so intense. We just had to get off the boat while the waves are crashing. That was super intense. And we couldn't have done it in a more beautiful and iconic spot. We're at the spout, there's this waterfall coming down. Spout shooting 15 meters into the air. It feels kind of insane, but uh, loving it. And we got 18 kilometers to hike uh, back for this leg of the uh, East Coast Trail. So super excited about today, but man, couldn't have started with a spicier start to the day. The region receives a lot of precipitation throughout the year. So when it's not frozen over by winter, the land is gushing with water. For each mile of the trail, you can expect to encounter dozens of waterfalls. And there are countless streams and creeks to cross along the way. So the Ocean Quest boat dropped me off down there at the spout. You can kind of see it erupting every 15 seconds or so. Uh, it's about two and a half kilometers away and uh, I've got a pretty big day ahead of me. Got to do 18 kilometers of coastline to get up to the next cove and the next point for me to have an overnight. Got a big day ahead of me, but looking forward to it. This coastline is stunning. So I'm just loving it out here. Oh 
you think a coastal trail would uh, be pretty flat. Well, this one's got a lot of ruggedness to it. So uh, even though it's coastal, it's still doing a lot of up and down. So uh, we just came to one of the high points and there's a spectacular view here, pretty high up on the cliffs, but uh, it's gorgeous up here. Gotta work hard for it though. This section of the East Coast Trail has been one of the best hikes I can remember. And as I leave the forest behind and move across an expansive headland, I can only marvel at the beauty and the diversity of the terrain that I've seen in such a short time. Well, it's been a super long day on the trail. I'm feeling utterly spent and worked. I uh, can't say anything more about this trail. It's been so beautiful and gorgeous, and today was just utterly spectacular. So despite the fact that I'm tired, and ready for a hot meal, I am uh, gonna enjoy this final bit down to town. With the new day, I'm excited to see a new section of the East Coast Trail. And so this morning, I'm meeting up with Ed Delaney to check out the Berry Head Arch, one of the most iconic features along Newfoundland's coastline. Ed is one of the managers of the East Coast Trail, and he's overseen a lot of its construction. What he's helped create is a beautiful and well-maintained trail that provides incredible access to a raw and rugged wilderness. This is one of the more weathered sections that I've encountered so far, and it's great to get down and dirty on these sections of wild trail. So I'm at one of the really spectacular places along the East Coast Trail. We're at Berry Arch, and uh, this is truly something that shows off the rugged beauty of the East Coast Trail. So we got to hike on top of it and stand on top of this wild feature, and that's a pretty wild experience, just being able to be out over the ocean on this arch. This is an incredible place. I am loving it here on the East Coast Trail. I'm staying in a storage container tonight, but it looks a lot sweeter than a storage container. Perfect place to stay on the trail. Oh baby, this is the light. The next day, I head off once again into the woods with Ed Delaney. We're following a trail building crew to see firsthand what goes into building the East Coast Trail. Right now we have 300 kilometers of trail starting here in Portugal Cove and uh, going north to Cape St. Francis down to Kappa Hayden. That's 300 kilometers that we consider finished trail. One of the areas that we build trail is fairly remote away from the community. So the first couple of kilometers from a, from a community, it's not too hard getting materials. But as you get further out, we do have problems. Physical manpower is the way we go. We don't use ATVs or machinery because of the damage that it does to our soils and our terrain. I would uh, estimate that within five years, uh, if we get this piece done that we're close on to finishing now this fall. Uh, we uh, got another 120. Uh, we should be probably within the vicinity of five years completing it into Tabasco. Ideally, when the trail is finished, we're gonna be around 420, 440 kilometers from Topsail Beach down to Tabasco. Although it's been really cool to see a part of the trail come to life, there's a lot more to the East Coast Trail to explore. And so I've met up with Aaron O'Brien to explore another beautiful section of the East Coast Trail.
Our mission is to camp on Flamberhead, a headland known for its rocky beauty. We've got a ways to go, so we need to move quickly down the stunning coastline. The journey is beautiful, but as the sun drops to the horizon, we're still a ways from our destination. We continue on in the darkness, comforted by the fact that we have everything we need on our backs. Before long, we find our spot, set up camp, and look forward to doing it all again tomorrow. I wake up to the gray and the cold. It's the kind of morning where you don't want to get out of your sleeping bag. But a good cup of camp coffee gets me perked up, and in no time, I'm ready to hit the trail once again. Despite the gray weather, the world around us is still so beautiful. The views are incredible and I take in as much of it as I can as we hike the last leg of my East Coast Trail adventure. I've put in a lot of miles this week here on the Avalon Peninsula, and I'm sad to be nearing the end. But even though the hike is over, I've still got one more adventure to look forward to. It's my birthday today, and I've decided to celebrate by heading out on the water with the Ocean Quest crew, and we are on the hunt for fresh scallops. All right, here we go, there it is. Hey, all your ups and downs be under the sea, gentlemen. Go get them, boys. The seas off Newfoundland are crystal clear, and divers from all over the world come here to explore the many well-preserved shipwrecks that can be found beneath the waves. But today, Johnny and Rick are diving for live scallops on the ocean floor. They have to go down about 80 feet, and the water here is frigid and so it requires some real technical skill to get their hands on these tasty treats. All right, bring her up. <laughs> oh, it's like a birthday present. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, holy moly. Goodness gracious. Oh, I think you did good, boys. I'll give you a hug, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Voila! Whoa. See the fresh? Fresh as fresh can be. Oh, yeah. As good as it gets. Sweet, eh? That's incredible. <laughs> no, ma'am. All the Newfoundlanders I've met are fun, generous, and a bit quirky. So I really should have expected the unique birthday cake that Rick and Johnny surprised me with. There you go, man. Happy oh, wow. birthday. How did you yo. find this down there? That's amazing. All right. Woo! There it is, man. It's all yours. That's all mine. There you go. That's the way to Holy go. moly. Wow. That's amazing. Newfoundland has got it all. An unbelievably beautiful terrain with a lyrical culture and a cuisine you'll never forget. What more could anyone ask for? With all that, it's truly one of the best trails I've ever hiked. Cheers. 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 Thanks for the work, guys. Yeah, happy birthday to you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, man. I can kiss the chef. <laughs> <laughs> or I won't. OK, just once. Just once? <laughs> no, we heard about it. On the cheek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rick.